Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at something big, something powerful, something expensive. It's the Kia EV9, aka man's best friend. Now, instead of taking it for a test drive, I think I'll just take it for a walk. So, what is an EV9? Well, it's a flagship for Kia and it's something unique in the Singapore market. That's because it's an electric car, that's the EV part, and it seats nine people. Just kidding, it actually seats six people. That's two in the front, two in the back, and two over here. And that makes it pretty unique in Singapore because how many three-row, six-seat electric SUVs can you think of? Now, Mercedes has three three-row cars, but they're all seven-seaters, and one of them is pretty small, one of them is way more expensive than this, and one of them is based on a van. So the Kia is not like those other cars. But before we take a look inside, let's take a moment to appreciate the outside because this is a big, big car. It's more than 5 meters long and the wheelbase at 3.1 meters is actually like 10 cm longer than a Bentley Ventegas wheelbase. And I think the design celebrates its bigness. Now the lines are all very vertical and all very angular. It's like someone took my script and folded it like 10 times to make the ev 9 shape. And yet, it's very futuristic. You have all these cool details like these pop-up door handles. And how about these digital wing mirrors? I mean, I first saw these on an Audi, but here they are now on a Kia. There's no front grille because, well, electric. And instead, you have this super cool lighting signature. And look at this crazy headlight design. I mean, the daytime running light goes like that, like that, like that. It's almost like a bolt of lightning. I've never seen anything like this before. And I think this tail light is super funky too. I mean, it leads your eye this way, this way, and that way. Now let's check out the back here. Okay, you've got quite a nice tailgate spoiler. And yes, I think there is a wiper hidden under there, very posh. Now, I don't know what your impression is, but many SUVs try to kind of minimize this surface over here. They'll put little indentations here or whatever. But look at the Kia, it frames its tailgate with the tail lights just to emphasize the width and then it kind of keeps the surface really clean and that seems to emphasize the verticality of this tailgate. It's almost like this is the car that wants you to realize just how big it is. And that's important because it has a big price. Here in Singapore, it costs $289,888 without the COE. There's never been a Kia anywhere near as expensive as this one. But that money does buy plenty of metal and hardware. Here in Singapore, we get the GT line, which has twin motors and 380 horsepower. That long wheelbase creates space for a big, big battery too, 99.8 kilowatt hours, which gives the car more than 500 kilometers of range. Okay, finally, time to look inside the car. First things first, I have my lovely aircon vents in front of me and my own aircon controls as well. And this being a Kia, I've got a ventilated chair to sit in. Now there's so much to talk about, I don't even know where to start. Uh, okay, there's a handy dandy grab rail here to sort of haul you on board uh, more easily. Ooh, look at this. I've got a surface here and also a bin, I can fit my whole arm in there. Check out how deep it is. Now let's see, I've got captain's chairs of course and that means I can recline if I want. Ah, that's the stuff. If I don't like the guy behind, I could of course expand my leg room and screw him, but I'm a nice guy so I won't do that. Uh, let's see. Now, captain's chairs are obviously more luxurious than having three in a row. It's like business class on the plane, right? But let me show you one extra benefit. Observe as my 48-year-old spine takes me to the back, like so. Okay, this button here means I can sort of get out more normally if I want to. But when I'm back here, I can tell you I've got loads of room. I mean, I am a full-grown adult, but look at how much leg room and headroom I have back here. So I'm pretty well accommodated and I really like this glass roof because it lets a lot of light flood into the cabin and makes it feel more airy and more spacious. I can also recline, I've got my beverage holder and I have a USB charging port, we both do. So let's say I'm the moody teenager of my household, right? I can just recline back here, read up and ignore my parents. Ooh, <laughs> Oh, but you know what? Sometimes you need to carry stuff more than you need to carry people. So let me show you what the beep is back here. Now let me fool around with the space here because you do have quite a lot even with all seven seats up. See what's 
under here. Oh, okay. You've got the luggage cover and having a place to stow it means, you know, you can use all seven seats as and when you like. Some cars don't actually let you carry this with you. Now, if you need more space than that, then these buttons are what you need to do. Press here, press here, and they fold down. Hey, presto, just like that. But the bottom line is, if you need a lot of space, well, the EV9 has a lot of space. Ah, but raw space isn't everything, you know. It's what you can do with the space that counts. For example, the EV9 has these interesting swivel chairs. They let you turn the rear into a sort of mobile living room or conference room, which is, of course, very nice if the people in the back are so in love with each other that they just can't stop looking at each other. Now, can you do that in your Bentley? Tell you what, though, I really can't wait to drive this thing. Let me tell you why. I can remember the very first Ferrari I ever drove. That was the F355 F1 back in 1997. Beautiful car. And the Kia EV9 actually has the same amount of horsepower as that Ferrari. So how crazy is that, right? Okay, first impressions. Well, you sit pretty high up. I mean, this is an SUV after all. But I tell you what, driving the EV9 doesn't feel like driving something like a Range Rover or a Land Rover Defender. When you are behind the wheel of those cars, right, you really feel like the master of the universe, like the king of the road. This car doesn't really quite give you that sort of feeling. In fact, it feels a little bit almost like an MPV. Uh, you're, you know you're driving something big. When you look in the mirror, everything's like way, way back behind you. But you don't feel like the king of the road. You more or less feel like the king of your own castle when you drive this. I tell you what though, when you come to a traffic light, you're gonna feel like a king because this thing, whoa, it gets from zero to 100, it's six seconds flat. Okay, so a couple of things stand out. Uh, number one, it's very, very quiet. Like it's electric, right? So you don't really hear anything from the motors. And it's very soothing because the suspension is actually pretty smooth for an electric car. But if you think that there's something missing and some people do when they switch from combustion to electric, you can actually uh, turn up a synthetic sound. Three levels, that's minimized, normal and enhanced. Let's go for enhanced and I don't know if you can hear this but when I step on the gas, you should be able to hear. <laughs> okay, it is seriously pouring right now so I'm just gonna slow it down and talk about the second thing that jumps out at you when you drive the EV9 and that is this digital wing mirror over here. I can see an upside to this because it's raining like crazy, right? But you don't really have to look out of a kind of droplet covered window to look at the mirrors. Instead, you've got quite a bright display over here. And I don't know if you can see, but sometimes when the vehicle's passing by, this triangle comes out to warn me of something in the blind spot. It is very sharp and it's pretty bright in conditions like these. So that's the upside. The downside is when you're someone like me who's been driving for like nearly 20 something years, kind of get used to looking out of your window to see uh, where your mirrors would be. And now that inside the car, it really takes a while to get used to it. But I tell you what though, uh, having lived with this car for a couple of days, I can tell you that when it's dry, the handling is kind of somewhere between sporty and safe. The thing is, this is a big car, so it's not exactly agile, but at the same time, even though it's so long and the wheelbase is so lengthy, it doesn't really steer like a battleship. So I think I'm gonna get out of the rain, go somewhere sheltered, where I can look at how this car behaves, where it really matters. Okay, so now let's see how the EV9 handles one of the toughest driving challenges known to man, aka the Singapore multi-story car park. So let's see how this 5.1 or 5 meter car handles these tight, tight ramps. And I'll show you that uh, with this car, uh, you have the aid of some technology to make these a little bit easier. Now my basic worries are that I'll scratch the bumper or maybe curb a wheel, right? So I can press this. Let me show you how the magic happens. And I've got a 360 view of the car, but not just that. You can see these yellow lines here. They kind of tell you where the car is going to go. This yellow line down here, it tells me that I'm not going to hit the curb over there. So that's brilliant because I can see where my car is, but also where it might be headed. And if all that is not enough, I can just signal right. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little view of uh, the right hand side of my car. And I can see very well that I'm just not in danger of uh, hitting that curb over there. So I'm going to jinx myself here, but I think I'm going to say that it's got to be almost impossible to scratch the wheels on a Kia EV9 or to scratch a bumper. 
Okay, now we come to the ultimate test though. And I don't know whether it's a test of my masculinity or a test of the EV9. And of course, I'm talking about parallel parking. So let me just make things easy for myself. I'm gonna park this car in front of a million dollar BMW XM and I hope don't scratch that car. Now I haven't rehearsed this. So this is the first time I'm actually parallel parking this car and this is the first time I'm gonna do it. Of course, we have an audience. <laughs> we have an ambulance on standby. All right, it's a big car, man. I'm really feeling the size now. But at the same time, I've got this camera system. So, oh no, it's not gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> I'm gonna start turning a little bit earlier and see what happens. I'm good. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Okay, one more shot and I should be home. And the thing is, these are regulation, I think, HDB size parking spots. So they are pretty tight. The car is five meters long and the whole thing is five meters long. So I more or less got it in. A little bit far away from the curb, but I think I'll take it as a pass. And obviously, I'm quite used to taking something big and starting it home somewhere tight. Okay, so I wanted to come somewhere a little bit darker because that really helps to bring out what this cabin is like. Now, Check out the ambient lighting, for example. I can set it to the driving mode. So if I'm in sport, ooh, everything goes fiery red. And then apparently when it's my driving style, everything gets a bit purple. Uh, the eco color scheme is all sort of green, aquamarine, a bit more soothing. And then there is back to the normal driving mode over here. You can see the ambient lighting changing to suit. What's interesting as well is these virtual buttons here, they're kind of backlit and it's all a flat panel. Uh, so there's no actual buttons here, but when you press down on it, it does change things. So yeah, that's actually quite a cool feature. Now, in terms of the cabin layout, it's actually quite open and airy in here. Now remember, this is an electric car, so we don't need a transmission tunnel, so that frees up a lot of space in the center over here. So here, if I'm carrying a handbag, I've got lots of space for that. And I have space for quite a ruby cup holder here as well. Two cup holders, in fact. And uh, oh, hello, Mr. Chia. This is actually where the wireless charging pad for phones is, and it's quite a big one. And there's not a whole lot of room under here. And that's because the space is taken up by that drawer for the rear passengers. Okay, now let me tell you about what's in front of me. There's a couple of buttons down there, which uh, you can't quite see, but that opens up the front as well as the boot, charging flap as well. Uh, and it's the parking brake. Uh, there is a little stubby controller here where you set the park, go forward, reverse, and that's on the right over here. In front of me, I have actually not two, but three screens. So that's a bit unusual, but the one in front of me, of course, is all the driver displays. Then I've got the touch screen, which is very bright and clear and pretty easy to use, but I do have to lean out of my seat to reach the furthest corner. The thing in the middle here, this little micro display, is actually for the climate controls. Now, I'm not so sure I like it over there because I can't actually see it very well from where I'm sitting because the steering wheel is in the way, so I kind of have to do this. But it is not a huge problem because I do still have these physical switches to set the temperature, to set the mode and the fan speed. So this one here is to impress your friends with and this set over here is to actually use. And finally, I want to do the old fingernail test. So let's have a go. Oh, that's a bit hard over there. Ah, better. Uh, let's try the doors. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. And uh, you've got a bit of a padded surface over here. Overall, I would say the plastics are just about sub-premium. Um, and you know, this is a cabin that's very easy on the eye, but maybe not so easy on the fingernails. But if you ask me, I think that's okay because it's very clear that what you spend your money on with the Kia EV9 is all that space and of course all the EV technology. So let's summarize the Kia EV9. It's big, it's powerful, and it is relatively easy to drive. And thanks to all those cameras, it is not a nightmare to park. I quite like the interior too. I mean, it's not super high quality, but if you're sitting in front, it's actually quite easy on the eye and it's futuristic as well, but without being all confusing to use. If you're sitting in the back, it's spacious, it's comfortable, and it's versatile. But it is expensive. Or is it? I mean, think about it for a second. For the same amount of money, what else can you buy that's this big, this powerful, this spacious, this versatile, this well-equipped, and this comfortable? That's right, there's nothing else out there. Of course, some people are gonna look at the EV9 and say, yeah, but it's a Kia. And they're only going to see the price. But I think there should be people out there who will look at this car and see the value.
a top review of the Kia EV9. Now, if you are interested in the EV9 or other Kia models, we have sales consultants from Cycle & Carriage Kia for you to connect with on mrchia.sg. Now, if you enjoyed watching that, please tell your friends and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We are a new channel and we could really use your support. Thanks for watching. See you again.